Here I'm compressing a spring from some initial position to some final position. And clearly in this diagram, I have the energy of the spring increasing. And I want to relate that to the work done by the spring. And the weird thing is they're always going to differ by a minus sign. So let's suppose this has already been compressed a little bit relative to the equilibrium position, just so I have clarity on which way to draw the force exerted by the spring. So it's already been squished a little bit. And the magnitude of that force, well, it takes a force of kx1 for me to squish it by a, a compression length of x1. So that's me pushing on the spring, but the spring has to push back to the left with exactly the same magnitude. That's just Newton's third law. By the time I get down here, clearly I have to push harder to squish the spring, so the spring pushes harder back on me with a force of kx2. And if I go to an arbitrary location x, just somewhere in the middle, that's why I made three pictures. The force exerted by the spring is some intermediate value, kx. So to figure out the work done on the spring, I'm going to write down a little work contribution for a small compression dx, so just a small increment at this arbitrary location. And the work done by the spring, because my dx points to the right, I really should call it a vector, and my spring force points to the left, this is going to carry a minus sign, and I end up with negative kx dx. Then I get the total work done by the spring. I do that by adding up all the contributions to the work. That's all integration is. And I put in my expression for dw. And then I have to look at the starting and finishing positions. So I've gone from some little squish of the spring to some big squish. The initial is x1 and the final is x2. It's not hard to guess the antiderivative here. It's negative one-half kx squared, evaluated from x1 to x2. And that gives me a negative one-half kx2 squared minus negative one-half kx1 squared. And here's where we give a name to this expression, one-half kx squared. We're going to call that the spring potential energy u spring is one half kx squared. And so what I see in this first term is u2, the spring potential energy at a compression of x2. And in this term, I see a u1. All right, so let's rephrase the work done by the spring. And we're going to keep a minus sign on this. It's going to be the negative. And the reason I do this is because I want to recognize a delta u. So I'm going to factor out a negative so that I have u final coming first. And then when I pull a negative out of this, there's still a minus sign on it, minus u initial. And so the work done by the spring is the negative of the change in this new thing we've defined called spring potential energy. So I wanted to point out that while this minus sign is disturbing, it makes sense if we do a little example of watching the spring uncoil. So as the spring uncoils, Clearly, it should be doing positive work. So that's when you would get the energy out of the spring. So as the spring uncoils, the work done by the spring should be given by the negative of the change in potential energy. So my U final in this case would be a 1 half kx1 squared 
my u initial again we're doing the uncoiling the reverse process my u initial would be one half kx2 squared and because x2 is a bigger number than x1 the thing in the parentheses here is negative but there's a minus sign out in front and that means this quantity would be bigger than zero so the spring does positive work when it's uncoiling All right, and this is true for every conservative force that the work it does is going to be negative while the potential energy is increasing the work it does is positive while the potential energy is decreasing 